Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. I have a feeling we've done this problem before or maybe something similar. If I did, I apologize. Hopefully this is gonna be a different experience. We have one minus i to the power z equals one plus i. So we have an exponent that conjugates basically because the complex conjugate of one minus i is one plus i. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos on basics of complex numbers. And if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry, go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. Great, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. Now you might be thinking, why don't we just log both sides? Any base is fine, but in this case, you would want to use the natural log, which is the ln, right? Because we're going to need to talk about something called complex logarithm. So if you ln both sides, you're going to get something like this. Z ln 1 minus i equals ln 1 plus i. A lot of times people write this as log, but it's ln, natural log. And then you can kind of isolate z as ln 1 plus i divided by ln 1 minus i. And then you can kind of try to find it, but what is the ln of a complex number, right? That's the good question. And there, aren't, there isn't a single value because it's complex valued, it's multi-valued. So to find the complex logarithm, you can kind of use the definition, like let's say w is a complex number, ln w would be the ln of the absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. Of course, we're talking about several arguments here because if you consider a complex number in the argon plane this is the imaginary this is the real it's going to make an angle theta but of course you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to it so theta the smallest angle between negative pi and pi i think would be considered the principal argument and it's usually i think denoted by a capital a arg and then um, you can kind of talk about the you know, principal value of the logarithm because there are infinitely many values, okay? So it's not like the real world where you just log a number and you get a single answer. So it's a different story. But yeah, you can proceed with that and find the result. But let's go ahead and use a slightly different approach which gives us pretty much the same thing. Let's go ahead and do this. We have one minus i to the power z equals one plus i. Obviously the answer isn't that straightforward because think about it. I can square 1 minus i, I get negative 2i. I can square 1 plus i, I get 2i. And then uh, I can kind of make him agree at some point, right? If you raise it to higher powers, let's go ahead and give it a try real quick. I can just square this and then raise it to the power z. And then I can square this. But you got to be very careful because when you square both sides, you might be introducing extraneous solutions. This is negative 2i to the power z. And then this is 2i. To the, it's just 2i, not 2i to the power something. And then you, you might be thinking, okay, if I raise negative 2i to the power negative 1, is that going to work? Nope. Because if you just look at the reciprocal, yes, 1 over i is going to be negative i, and that's going to work, but you're going to have a 1 half. So it's kind of problematic, but hopefully you can solve that problem by introducing the complexified version of 1 and so on and so forth. But that's too complicated, probably, and that may not even work, I just guessed it. So, let's go ahead and do something else. I wanna go ahead and actually use the polar forms. One minus i, if you consider the argon plane again, it's gonna be right here, right? So it makes basically an angle of negative pi over four, and one plus i is gonna make an angle of pi over four, right? And of course, we measure it in uh, you know positive and negative directions, but negative pi over 4 is better than uh, 3 pi over 4. Wait a minute, that's not right. What is the right approach? 7 pi over 4, that's what I meant. Okay, it's better to use negative pi over 4 because you want that to be between negative pi and pi. Make sense? So, how do we go about writing these in polar form? Then 1 minus i. First of all, you need to find the, well, I was going to say radius, but it's probably better to say modulus or the absolute value. It's square root of 2. Multiply by e to the power negative i times pi over 4, right? So this is for 1 minus i. What about 1 plus i? We have something similar. It's root 2 again, but this time it's going to be pi over 4. 
If you just do this, let's just go ahead and take a look at it directly this way, and then we're gonna look at other alternatives. You're gonna be getting something like root two to the power z e times times e to the power, oops, I pressed the wrong thing, times e to the power negative i z pi over four, and that's equal to root two times e to the power i pi over four. So in this case, you basically want the following. You want uh, root two to the power z to be one, I mean two, root two in other words. So z should be one, right? And then you do want, that means z equals one, but z equals one is not gonna work. So that's kind of problematic, isn't it? Think about it. So we need to do something else. So rather, uh, we should write it in a different way. How do we do that? We can actually go ahead. I thought I was erasing everything. Now, we can actually go ahead and do this. Uh, why don't we write root two to the power z, and then instead of this, we can just write this as pi over four plus two pi n, and then raise it to the power z, right? And then just go from there. But let me tell you something. If there's even a better way to do it. And let's just go ahead and use that method. What is w to the power z when w and z are both complex numbers? In other words, complex exponentiation. You can write this as e to the power z ln w. And again, that brings us to the same point. So if you go ahead and write it that way, you're going to be getting e to the power z times ln 1 minus i equals 1 plus i. And you could basically use natural log here. So it's just going to come down to the same thing. So why don't we just follow that? Uh, we can go ahead and ln both sides, and it's going to turn out to be this one, right? Now let's go ahead and talk about the complex logarithm one more time. Okay, great. And then we can also go back and see why this exponential method didn't give us the result the way we wanted, we wanted it to. Okay, so this is going to be ln root 2 plus, and that's going to be, remember, i times the argument. And in this case, the argument is negative pi over 4, but I like to add 2 pi n to it. So I'm going to write it this way. And then on the other side, we have ln root 2 plus i times pi over 4, but again, I'm going to add 2 pi k to it so that I can cover all the angles, infinitely many values, and then k are integers, by the way, okay? From here, we can basically safely say that ln root 2 plus i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, and then that is divided by ln root 2 plus i times negative pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. We could probably think about something like, okay, what if k and n are both 0? Yes, that's possible. If they're both 0, then we kind of get the simplest form, z equals ln root 2 plus i pi over 4. Again, this is a complex number in a plus bi form, which is the standard form. And the denominator will be ln root 2 minus i times pi over 4. If you're super picky, you can go ahead and multiply by the conjugates. This is going to be ln root 2 plus i pi over 4. And you're going to do the same thing here. And that will be squared in the denominator. You're going to get something squared plus something squared, so on and so forth. But that's not super necessary. I think this is good enough. Now, why didn't we get the same answer with our first approach? Let's go ahead and explore a little bit more. So we have 1 minus i. By the way, here's one thing to think about. You also need to make sure that when you take the absolute values, things kind of agree, right? Because uh, sometimes you get problems like this. i to the power z is 1 plus i. Is that possible at all? Think about it. The modulus for this one is 1, but for this it's root 2. So where does that extra modulus come from, right? Is that going to work? That's something to think about. But let's go back to the problem. So when I wrote this as root 2 times e to the power negative i pi over 4, and I think I'm supposed to write this as i times negative pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, and then on the other side, root 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And here's the thing, we raise this to the power z, right? So when you raise it to the power z, um, looks like this is giving me z equals 1 only, right? Because if this is true, then does that mean z is equal to 1? One thing to keep in mind, though, you're able to multiply both sides by e to the power 2 pi ni. 
because this represents one in the complex world. So when you do the natural log, that should give you an additional 2 pi n i, which I think will work. Anyways, let me know what you think, because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.